Hello, Solo Board Game Guide here. Andy has finally happened. I've got the production uh, proof copy of Decline My Solitaire Come RPG Tactical Combat Game. Um, this is the, uh, the the box artwork. So I've got my guard, uh, a bit of spiel on the back, which you can pause and read now if you wish. Um, a skeleton and sort of a bit of a um, bucket list item. Get my name on a game box that I have designed and then uh, I had a bit of spare space on the template so I've got a bit of a graphic on the bottom. This isn't final but uh, it certainly looks quite cool and it's a weird format you'll notice. It's the poker sized cards but um, yeah it's in a large box and deliberately so because inside I wanted space for the cards which I've put in at a terrible angle but also any minis and things. Now, during my uh, hiatus from making videos for the channel, I've been doing lots of exciting things, which I'll come on to, watch till the end of the video. I'll show you some of the 3D printing and laser cutting stuff that I've been doing. But I intend to laser cut um, some inserts for this box uh, to keep everything nice and neat. So that should be a, a fun little project, which I will document on the channel. Um, so onto the cars uh, for the hundred some people that are on the uh, the mailing list link in the description this is a uh, an exciting moment it certainly is for me anyway so creatures what I've done I only got three pieces of artwork commissioned because I don't really know what I'm going in terms of the full flavor of the game for the creatures do I want to go trad fantasy or do I want to spice it up a little bit so I've got three that I know are going to appear in the game I've got the stat blocks I have their uh, various melee and range weapons with the damage and range. A few experimental um, keywords, so disengage, charge and so on. And I've got weaknesses and loot. So these are all very much um, alpha, I guess you'd call it in the programming world. So what I've done on the back is I've left them blank so that I can sort of sketch on them. So skeleton beautiful skeletal artwork um, watchman and crokin i think it looks super cool now i wanted a feel for the size of the deck for that size of the game so the entire game will be about that possibly more possibly less don't know yet um, so i've printed out a big stack of creature cards um, in total, I think it was about 15 uh, creature cards, so I've got them dual sized, so I can just sketch them and play with different um, different monsters, basically. So that's the monster deck. Next, on to the crafting deck, because a big component of this game is um, finding ores, minerals, herbs, and loot, and combining them in various combinations to make cool things like oddities, armors robes and headwear and weapons and so on. So I'll just show you these briefly and I will do separate videos and all this. So on the orders and minerals, I've got the list on the video that I'll link to up here. I'll go into this in some detail. But I've got this column buy and sell. Don't know whether that's going to make it into the final game, but uh, it's there to have an experiment with. There will be values in here which I need to play with. So where we go back to, here we go, look, uh, loot D10. On the loot card, what that means is if you manage to kill a Crokin, then you'll roll a d10 and you will be able to select one of any of these items, which is cool. If it was a d12 loot, any of these items and so on. And different areas will d yield different herbs, ores and minerals and so on. So those are the sort of uh, available raw materials and onto the stuff you can make. So we've got oddities, gloves, heavy armors, light armors, robes and mantles, headwear, footwear, jewelry, shields, range weapons, pierce, piercing weapons, bludgeoning weapons, potions, food and drink. That feels a bit ridiculous, I'll be honest. It's a hell of a lot of work to, uh, to come up with all these things and have it balanced. So that might be thinned out and as my good friend Dave suggests, maybe we'll form part of an expansion, but We'll see. Um, nothing's ruled out at this early stage. Character sheets. 
um, just look like this at the moment. Fairly simple, just double sided, nothing special about them. But this will be in a sleeve and you'll sketch on the front of the movement agility, strength, toughness, health, and effects, and your action points, which is the main sort of mechanism in the game. Now I'm working on some super cool laser cut projects, one of which I'm just going to grab from the shelf next to me. Should have thought this one through. Here we go. So this is some laser profiled uh, galvanized steel. So you'll notice it's the same size as a poker size card. And what I'm envisaging is a little tracker. So I've got these little magnets. Imagine a laser cut frontage on it. And then basically you can slide to show how many health or any particular thing you want to track. So anyway, video coming up on that soon. So character sheet of sorts. Uh, equipment. So this is what you are carrying. So again, you'll just write on. Head, shoulders, body, gloves, left and right hand, feet and jewellery. Uh, I've just double sided that. So if the character will actually form, um, basically there'll be three cards to make up your character, your actual personal stats, what equipment they're wearing, and also um, the bag for which they might be carrying some mithril and a bit of leather scraps or whatever. Uh, it can be upgraded to a large bag, so you'll be able to use both sides of the card. So those three items will form the character. Right, on to the quests. So I'm looking at 30 quests, so there'll be a quest deck. And the quests in the first iteration, at least, look like this. Bit of story, come flavour. And then on the back of it... Is a setup and win conditions. So it tells you who you're fighting, the map layout, which I'll go into in a separate video, starting positions, uh, any special instructions. Because what I don't want this game to be is a hero quest esque. Go into a map, fight some stuff, move to the end. I want each one to be an individual puzzle or adventure. So each quest, this first one is you, you're faced with enemies you can't really beat, so you're, look, you're looking to outrun them. And there'll be various um, caches around. So as you find the caches, it sets your character up with some starting equipment rather than just be given it randomly. So I've, again, left myself with plenty of blank cards to write on, print out on, do what I will. Um, which leaves us to uh, the last and thing that's taken an enormous amount of work. Oh, I'll come back to those, that's interesting. Um, Put these with my characters. The map tiles themselves. This is, I'm so happy with how these have turned out. Um, there we go, focus there, I think. So, just as you've seen in the various videos, they look fantastic in real life. This brown background doesn't really work terribly well, so I'll probably lose that just for the green background, just so that I can make it a bit more seamless. But this is the purpose of prototyping and testing. Um, there we go, tree house, mine, bit of a blank field. Should probably got more of those printed out if I'm honest, but there we go. Um, again, big church type thing. And on the back of each, uh, each card, I've given it a name. So this is the forest shrine. Uh, this thing here is South Head. And those of you who know me will know that there's a quite a few local references to both my uh, sort of childhood memories and things that I like in the world, such as the lovely hill at the end of my road, South Head. Uh, this, fairly unimaginatively, is called an Offering Ground. And on each card, on the back of it, it is, I can just zoom in on this, a quote from The World of Decline, which uh, basically gives a bit of flavour, so hard work and sacrifice was just a metaphor in my day, so it says Onirim, Simmonstone, Village Elder. Simmonstone being the village I grew up in, Onirim being classic solitaire game, so there's lots of like references like that. If you can't do that when you design your own game, when can you do it? Um, but yeah, fantastic, so that all these things exist uh, with a quote on, 
and a symbol, a scatter, and a probability distribution for deciding various things, type of loot you'll find, and uh, an enemy position. I'll go into all this stuff, another thing, but, oops, I don't see, it looks, I'm really happy with it, really, really happy with it. This is one cock up, I left the bleed gutted, left the bleed um, layer on, which shows the limits of the car, but it is actually quite interesting in that you'll notice this this is the safe area rather anything else is unsafe so it might be printed off there is a few misalignment issues you'll notice there's a bigger gap that side than there is that which doesn't seem to be problematic but um yeah it's worth noting actually because you're not they're not going to line up perfectly but uh it's not a problem Right, so what I did is I pulled a few cards out and I just wanted to show you what an example one of these maps looks like. So if you bear with me 30 seconds or so, I will uh, create one. So, let's see if I actually ordered them correctly in the back. Oh, I think I have. Kiss of death. It's one of the really fun things I'm looking forward to during the playtesting phase is uh, just faffing around with these these tiles and making some cool maps. Look at that. How awesome does that look? I'm so happy about that. So in the uh, the box, I've got a couple of little creatures. And in my haste, I couldn't find the one I painted in the, uh, the other video. But just to give you an idea of what the scale is, here's a little skeletal archer. And uh, well, what have we got here? One of the Pendragon ogres. So he is big. He's probably like eight, nine foot tall in real life. Um, so he does look large on the map, but deliberately so. There's definitely some scale issues that I need to play with. The house probably isn't big enough. Um, but I'm actually pretty happy. You know, there's there's always going to be tweaks. This is a prototype. I'm just going to demount this uh, camera, so excuse the shakiness for a second. And we'll have a bit of a closer look. Right. So here we go. Um, that is the map you'll be playing on. Now, it's going to be held in place by... I, I'm anticipating playing this game in a 9x9 nine nine sort of... Sorry, three by three folder page from a collectible card game. So the little document, you know, the, the card wallets that you get. So things don't slide around. But on a, a gaming surface like this, it's uh, it works out pretty well. Things don't move around too much. So also this is the uh, portable gaming um, surface that I made. So there's a video about that, which I hope to remember. I'll link up there if you're interested in that. It's from an IKEA picture frame. Um, yeah, so I'm just absolutely made up with it. Fantastic. So we've got an enemy deck, quest deck, uh, terrain deck, basically, which makes up the game. So uh, there you have it. If you ha if this tickles your fancy and you haven't really heard anything about it, I've got a playlist, which you should definitely watch. But su subscribe to the newsletter down in the... Uh, in the uh, the comments, the section, you know, the description -y bit. So uh, sign up to that and then you'll get the print and play version of this before anyone else. So these things here are basically creature markers. I'll go into that in another video, but say if you've got two skeletons, they will be able to track how many skeletons you've got. Uh, I'll throw those on there and I'll stick this pile of stuff on here and this beautiful vanity box with my name on it because screw it. I designed a game and uh, I've always quite wanted to have my name on a game box. And what I'll just leave you with is remount the camera. Smooth. There you go. I'm going to show you some of the Arkham Horror goodness. That is some game, Arkham Horror. My goodness me. Let me just take this away. And then under my magic table. Ooh, is Arkham Horror. I just set that up there. A second. 
Right. What a, what, what a game this is. My good friend Tom introduced me to this. He said, if you're designing a solitaire game, you really ought to play Arkham Horror. And he was right. Uh, there's no particular spoilers. <laughs> it's only the second scenario. But um, this is the kind of game that needs, needs this table, to be quite honest, so I can hide it away. Because uh, a life where you're trying to design a board game, have an actual job, and have two children under the age of uh, three and a half means that you need to be able to put a game away and uh, not lose your progress. So, yeah, look at it. It's beautiful. It's story driven, solitaire. It's um, the big role playing element. It's everything that I want my game to be, really. And check this out. This is something that I've just worked on. Um, look, it's a 3D printed. Um, first aid marker token that I painted up. Look at that. That's good, isn't it? Well, I think it is anyway. Also did some little flashlight tokens. And, oh, see if I can zoom in there. Flashlight tokens. And I did some uh, bullet tokens as well, which are all a lot more fun than just using these generic um, supply cubes. But uh, I'll do a video on that, that whole process there. Sorry, the lighting's a bit weird. Um, but there we go. That's a great game. So if mine is a patch on that, I'll be very happy. But um, what I'll do, I'll close this down. Oh, my by Arkham Horror. Get the old decline out, and I'll just leave you with some shots the various cards of decline so if you're interested in seeing a, a bit more detail stick around there'll be various things pop up on the screen you can watch the playlist i love your comments and feedback the only reason i've got this far is because of you lovely people giving me support and encouragement and um yes we're getting there thanks for watching